And so uh, what I would like to show you is uh, some work that we've been doing at uh, slow speed, but for a long time. And, and uh, I started uh, with Basil actually a long time ago. And, uh, and uh, there have been some development along the years. And uh, you'll see that uh, this is, uh, so it's about fracture in thin sheets. And you'll see that geometry will be the key, the key ingredient, the key player. And um, let, I hope you, you'll find many situations that you already encountered and some that you, you, you don't know. So it's been, uh, it's been uh, nice because we, we worked uh, on this with uh, many people, people in, uh, so, uh, so in, we are in Paris, but we have people in, Pedro is now in Lausanne, a, a nice group in, uh, in Santiago. Brazil has given us many ideas along the way. And Marino, who was, I think, giving a seminar not very long ago, did uh, a nice, uh, nice uh, numerical uh, approach uh, on these uh, things. So what is steering really and why is it, why is it interesting? Started, uh, okay, before that maybe you can say that, uh, oh, okay, I have to click this, okay. That in the lab, we're also interested in uh, surface tension effect on thin sheets here and uh, also how we can maybe uh, actuate uh, thin plates. But, uh, so we, I will not be talking about this today. So what, what is a uh, really, um, uh, fracture, what is really what I hear, what I understand by tearing. I, I will show you a small experiment. So before this, okay, I will try to make a movie of, okay, of my desk here. And uh, this is a typical uh, uh, material that I'm interested in. Uh, it's very common. Um, and uh, uh, yes, so uh, the interesting thing in this material, it's very thin, so very flexible. Okay, I will have to understand that. It's very flexible, but also, uh, of course, as it's thin, it's, it's much easier to, to bend than to, than to stretch. It's also very hard to nucleate to create a new crack. Uh, but once we create one, once we have a small notch, then, uh, okay, this was a bad notch. Once I make a notch, then it very easily, uh, for very little force, propagate. So I will call this uh, a brittle material. Although, it, although it's it's uh, it's uh, always we know that brittle brittleness is is kind of a strange concept. Uh, every material is, is is a plastic at some scale. So what I want to show you is the experiment that from at which we started when uh, when I showed this to Basile at, at the time. I think it was more than more than five years ago. I think Basile maybe a bit more. It's more like fifteen years. You're kidding. Huh? Maybe closer to 20. Okay, so uh, when you uh, want to open this uh, package and you don't have a, a good a good, uh, a good knife, you may use a key. So I'm looking for my key now that I had prepared. Okay, here it is. So I, uh, okay, let me check that you can see what's happening. So this is the material, okay. I will uh, make a first hole in the material here. Okay, and now I just pull I just pull my key. And you see that something strange has happened. The, the fracture has some jagged movement. And if you look closely, it has a very regular uh, path. So that was the, the why is it that we have some oscillation in the path? And why is it that this wavelength amplitude is so regular, even though I made the experiment really uncontrolled way. So that was the, the starting point. We can, I can show you a movie of a controlled experiment where you can see that the crack is always ahead of the, of the object. Now the object here is a much bigger than my key. It's about three centimeter wide. And you see the crack path is ahead and it's moving um, left and right with a regular fashion, even though even though it looks like a complete mess. If I, if I, um, um, if you look at uh, what happens, uh, it, it, it really is bending in a very complex, maybe non-reproducible way, uh, but still the fracture has a very uh, clean uh, path. So that was the, the, the question, how can we explain this interesting oscillation, very reproducible, even though, 
uh, it's hard to control the, uh, the crack, the path of a crack in general. When you have a brittle material, you want to cut a glass in two pieces. You need to mark the path with a very sharp tool and then hope that you give the right uh, bending uh, so that the, the, the cut goes the way you want. So why is the crack path so, so reproducible? Well, if you look uh, in the literature, there's not a lot of uh, studies on this uh, problem, even though there are some applications. Uh, opening a package is not always easy, and maybe there are ways to improve that. Uh, so, and maybe when you have, and also this is an interesting point, when you have a very uh, clean uh, experiment that is very reproducible, those, and usually it's good test uh, for theory uh, or numerics. So uh, these are the incentive to, to study this, uh, this problem. So what I want to do today is not really to go into a lot of details. Uh, well, I, I will go into details, but I would try to give you uh, what we can, the simplest pic picture of, of this problem. And then we'll try to apply this to uh, maybe five situations. I'm afraid maybe I won't be able to make five, but at least uh, four, four little problems that you will probably have in encountered uh, in, your, in your everyday life. So uh, the, why, is it in, why is it difficult? Well, usually when we talk about fracture, we, we have very powerful tools, it's the linear elastic uh, fracture mechanics. And it uh, relies on the study of the stress, uh, the stress close to the singularity. And we know that close to the singularity, the stresses are take a universal shape and only depend on three uh, parameters at each point. And uh, so it's very convenient. You just try to compute these three parameters and you know everything about the crack. So in principle, you know the energy release rate, you know it's going, if it's going to propagate and you know in which direction in principle, you know, and you have some criterions based on these. Uh, uh, so you have a lot of tools to, uh, and, and this theory is, is, very, uh, is very much advanced. However, it's hard to use here because if you want to look at the thing, at the scale of the singularity, then you need to zoom in uh, inside the thickness of this of this object here. Whereas, if you want to use the plate mechanics, this is the complete uh, opposite approach that you usually do. You you want to uh, average uh, the quantities over the thickness, which is very small, and um, and see this as a Mathematical surface with uh, attached uh, with uh, some uh, some uh, energy uh, elastic energy uh, and, and mechanical quantities. So you see that uh, it's very hard to to use the two uh, approach at the same time, and this is why it's a very very difficult problem if you want to use uh, standard tools. Uh, so what can you do? You could uh, still try to do it. Then you need to have some very fine uh, numerics uh, approach. Uh, you could try to, to generalize this uh, approach to uh, plate mechanics. So why don't you try to compute the equivalent of stress intensity factors for plate mechanics? And, and uh, this, people have started to do it, but it's it's uh, not much advanced. Like, for example, what is the crack pass is, is different. Uh, it's not really uh, understood. So what we will do is something related or it is a simple uh, version of variational approach, which is really to look at energies and uh, use uh, a Griffith crack. And we'll make some crude approximation to estimate the elastic energy of, of the system. So that's what I will, will try to do today. And uh, um, so for thin sheets, we can uh, uh, separate the elastic energy into bending and stretching. And um, so let me, uh, so that's what we try to do. And um, let's, let's and, and for fracture, I'm going to just remind you some very basic, basic uh, element, which is Griffith's uh, criterion. Uh, and Griffith criterion tells you when does a crack propagate. So suppose you are pulling on this piece of material, and uh, you see that when you when you pull, the your hands have moved here. 
So you have produced some work as the fracture has propagated. So if you look at energy balance, you see that the, you, the work you produce will go into changing the elastic energy of the material of the system here, plus creating, uh, plus uh, and you also have to uh, uh, dissipate energy associated with the fracture propagation. So it's an energy that we can attach to the, the surface created. T would be the thickness and DL is the advance here. So this energy is, uh, is uh, looks like surface tension for those of you who, who are interested in fluids, but it's uh, irreversible processes that are being um, modeled or uh, yeah modeled into this uh, surface uh, surface energy. And in fracture mechanics, we like to uh, to uh, put this guy here on that side and divide by the area, and we'll have here all the energy that is available for the fracture. Uh, to propagate per unit of fracture of fracture area. So this is the energy release rate. And here we'll have on this side, just DC, the fracture energy. So we say that the fracture can propagate when G uh, becomes equal to, to GC. So that's uh, Griffith's criterion. Very simple. So what I'm going to do is to do a very, very crude approximation. I will say that the sheet here, as you say, is very, very easy to bend. So I will neglect bending energy. I will also say that it's uh, with the scale of forces that will be in, in place. So because it's very brittle, it's going to be almost, uh, it will almost not extend. So there will be, it will break before any extension will uh, build up. So I will say that it's inextensible. So you see that uh, we, if we lo look at the energy balance of the of Griffith criterion, uh, this energy term will, here will be completely zero. There's no elastic energy. So I'm asking you to think about a strange problem where fracture propagates in a system where there is no elastic energy. It's kind of uh, unusual, but uh, what happens really is that the work of the operator, the work completely goes into uh, fracture energy. So that's the core of the argument I will use today in, 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 my, uh, in my talk. All, all of the energy release rate comes from the work of the operator. So that's what I wanted to tell you about the theoretical approach. And now let's look at some, some simple uh, cases where we apply this. So the first one is a uh, tearing. And this is really the way we tear a piece of paper. So. The question we want to ask is, what is, what is the crack class? So um, it's interesting. Uh, so the game will be the following. We have two points, A and B. And with my hands, my fingers, I will use pull on point A and pull on point B. Look at the distance C is the crack path, is the crack, sorry, tip with the distance L1 and L2. And here I have some, uh, uh, arbitrary uh, crack uh, path to get to point C. So when I pull on these guys and I'm trying to, uh, the, the sheet is so flexible, uh, so bendable, if you wish, that uh, cannot su support any torque. And therefore, the force vector uh, must, will give you uh, A, B, and C will be aligned with the force vector. So these lines here will become a straight line. And so uh, as a consequence, then uh, if I try to, so I'm looking here in the actual configuration, uh, the, the force I will apply will be F, the, the, sorry, the, with the force applied F, I will create a work, which uh, is easy to, to compute. It's just F DL1 plus DL2. So now uh, we can go back into the uh, reference configuration to compute these distances. And you see that suppose that the crack propagates in a direction given by T, T the vector T in a, of a distance ds, then uh, the work uh, is df dl1 dl2. How much is dl1, how much is dl2? It's very easy to compute. You just project T ds on the, on the direction AC and, and BC and dl1, is just uh, this this quantity, uh, so it will increase most if uh, T is along T A, and it's the same for 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 D L two. So um, if I compute this quantity here, I see that I can easily uh, phrase it into uh, 
uh, vector uh, vector product uh, vector uh, dot product with a with a with a vector uh, t a plus t it should be t b actually yeah it should be t b uh, um, which uh, T A and T B are all uh, unit vectors. So T A B uh, is really along the bisecond of this uh, of this uh, of this uh, two direction A, A C and B C. Okay, so it's very simple geometry, but it gives us a very important, uh, very interesting result. Like the, if I compute the energy release rate just from uh, uh, dividing the work by the area uh, thickness times ds, then I guess uh, you see that the, en the energy risk rate is proportional to the force I apply, but also to this uh, product here. So uh, you see that uh, it gives you some interesting thing. It's independent of the previous path, just depends on these directions uh, here. And it's also independent of material properties. And this is a hint that the fracture pass is going to be very, very robust. Only depends on the geometry of the loading, not much on, not on the material properties. So the question, next question is, uh, which direction will, will the crack follow? And uh, let's call uh, theta the angle between TAB and uh, the direction of propagation. And it, well, well, you see that then this TAB theta becomes just cos theta. And if I now uh, present the uh, energy release rate here as function of theta, uh, I have this cosine uh, shape, okay? Uh, and uh, <clears throat> you see that here, uh, the energy release rate is for every angle smaller than the uh, energy uh, of fracture. So fracture cannot propagate for this force. So let's increase a little bit the force. Uh, I cannot propagate still, but when I reach this point, then there's a first uh, point where a fracture can propagate and it occurs for the maximum of the energy release rate here. So this is the criterion of the maximum energy release rate, which is a classical criterion for fracture propagation that we will use also here. So in this case, we see that uh, the maximum is for theta is zero. Uh, so uh, we, will propagate, fracture will pro should propagate along the, uh, the bisecond of these two lines. That's the prediction. And if it's the case, it's nice because uh, you, you, you find that the, the curves that are everywhere uh, tangent to uh, the bisecond of two, uh, two, two points AC, uh, to the two to the two to the sector that you build with the two fixed point a and b are hyperbole with a focal point a and b so these curves here when you tear a piece of paper like that you are actually uh, supposedly uh, creating hyperbole is it true so we do the experiments here we have point a and point b and for different starting point you see that we have here Oops, sorry. In uh, in black we have the theoretical uh, hyperbole, and in uh, pink these are the uh, crack path that we uh, obtain. So from far away it looks like it's very good. Uh, we have a lot of curvature here, and we go in this direction for this crack. This this one is straight, so it, it gives a very very. Uh, very good uh, first approximation of the crack path, but still it's not completely perfect. And for example, you see the here that all the experimental paths as are always on the left side of the of the theory. And uh, our explanation for this is that the material is not isotropic. Uh, probably it is uh, easier to crack in this direction than in this direction. So can we include uh, anisotropy into our uh, framework? So when we start to talk about anisotropy, then uh, fracture mechanics becomes very, very complicated. And actually uh, there is no uh, consensus accepted general criterion for where does the crack propagate in 
and anisotropic material. If you look at, for example, if you use abacus, there is no, there is no prediction of crack path in, uh, in an anisotropic material. Uh, so this is still an open question, but there is a simple uh, way to generalize the maximum energy release rate, and uh, it's just to do the same um, the same job we did before. But now we 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 see that the energy of fracture would be maybe lower in this case than in this part. So this is this is easy to break in this direction, and it's hard to break in this direction. So how if we increase if we do the same uh, same process? We see that as we increase the force, the first time where the crack can propagate, it's not at the maximum, but it's in this point here, which has a double tangent uh, condition. So we don't have propagation in the maximum of energy release rate, but rather in the maximum of G over GC, which is a, a, a criterion that people have proposed, uh, suggested a long time ago, and. Uh, and uh, that has been uh, studied uh, recently too, but it's hard to make it's hard to, it's hard to make experiments to really um, uh, check this uh, experimentally because of what because because the in an anisotropic material you have anisotropy for the energy release for the energy of fracture, but you also have anisotropic elasticity, and so. Um, you have two sources of anisotropy and it becomes uh, quite uh, difficult. In our case, we're quite lucky because uh, we have no, we have only uh, this part, which is anisotropic. As I told you, this is the energy release rate is pure geometrical, comes directly from the, the work of the operator. So we can do, and maybe we have an easier life in here. So let's try to see if it works. So uh, I just do want to mention that uh, an easy and interesting way to, to make this uh, construction uh, here is to work in a polar coordinate and plot not G, but, but one over GC as a function of theta. This is the inverse Wolf plot, if you want. And in this case, well, the, the, the energy release rate as a function of theta, which was a, a, para, uh, a sine uh, equation, becomes here a single, a simple, simple straight line. So as a, as a, you increase the force, as you increase the force, then the the the, the line comes closer and closer to the to the center because it's one over g that we are we are plotting. And then there's a first point where you have tangency, which corresponds to this, and this is one way to 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 find them. So. We can try to do this experimentally. We can measure this uh, one over. This is uh, this is one over GC as a function of, of theta. We can try to measure it for every point, and using this, we can uh, we can uh, then predict the direction of, of propagation. And you see that it does a very nice way. It, it, it does it does improve a lot the prediction because here here these are the this is this is the isotropic theory, and this is the uh, the theory, uh, including uh, anisotropy, um, we here we, we chose a case where this direction here would be a direction of symmetry of the sheet of material, and therefore you see that uh, it's uh, it's actually the, the it's actually the direction where the energy of, of fracture is minimal, and therefore uh, you see that all uh, the the fracture paths are kind of deflected toward this, this direction, but not when you are in this direction. So you see that the experiments here are very nicely, uh, dots are very nicely um, predicted by the geometrical plus uh, anisotropy uh, system. If you choose another direction, so now this is the direction that is weak. You see that all the cracks are moving to, to this direction. Uh, and uh, again, uh, it does a, a nice job at explaining the discrepancy between the isotropic theory and the uh, experiments. So it, it's, it's very nice. Oh, I just want to mention that uh, an interesting uh, an interesting uh, thing when you use this uh, uh, this representation is that sometimes your one over GC curve becomes non-convex. 
And then in this case, you might want to uh, propagate cracks in many directions. You'll find that there's no way this, this red point can go into this zone here, which becomes uh, forbidden directions. So there are, there's no way to propagate cracks along some directions when anisotropy is uh, too large, which has a lot of um, analogies with uh, the shape of crystals, which uh, become uh, uh, singular uh, when the, the anisotropy of the material becomes larger. So there's a nice story also to be told here, but I won't do it. Uh, we just say that uh, people uh, in uh, in uh, using a uh, um, phase field approach also uh, found some uh, forbidden directions. So you see the crack will never propagate in this in this uh, direction here. And I will now uh, go into a uh, second uh, situation as time flies. And this second situation is uh, is one uh, where uh, we want to use uh, uh, two cracks. So, uh, and uh, let me do the experiment for you. And this is, uh, so this is my, uh, again, it's the same material as before, but now I don't need to buy cookies all, all the time. So I, I can just buy a roll. So I make two, uh, two cracks and I will uh, propagate the crack along this direction here. We, you see that when I pull like this, uh, the two cracks will uh, join in a finite time. This is annoying. If you imagine that this is uh, your cookie wrapping, you would like to have the opening uh, going, you would like to, the opening to, to widen. So can we give some better initial conditions? So I will try to make it go uh, wider. So I give initial condition that go towards the, towards the outside. And when I pull, you see that immediately the crack uh, will, uh, will go uh, inwards as soon as I, I, I pull. And if I compare the two, uh, the two uh, shapes, uh, it's not perfect today, but okay. Well, okay. Well, it's not perfect, but it's similar. Okay. So my message was, uh, that uh, actually there is again a very robust um, uh, trajectory and we would like to understand why it should go uh, like this inwards and um, so what is what is the direction theta so let's suppose the direction is theta and compute the energy release rate in this direction so if we if we uh, pull on this flap uh, you see that uh, I have uh, worked because this distance here has, has increased and now, uh, if you look from the side, you see that uh, dx is uh, equal to dz because the sheet is inextensible. But it's also equal to dl cos theta. dl is the advance of the crack just from simple geometry. So propagation will occur if the work uh, will compensate, if we neglect energy, elastic energy, it will compensate the um, fracture energy. And therefore, uh, if we, we can divide by the area and we find that, again, it's very similar to the previous case, the energy release rate is uh, proportional to the force and then as cosine theta, where theta is here. So uh, what is the maximum of this? Uh, it's, it's clear, uh, it's uh, when uh, cosine theta is one, so if theta is zero is, is the best direction for the fracture. So it would say that um, the propagation would lead to a straight, uh, straight parallel uh, strip. And this is not what we see. We see in the experiment, we do something like this. So why is it that fracture goes inwards? Um, it goes inwards because, um, because we neglect, I mean, in our model, we neglected uh, some interest, some important uh, uh, ingredient here, which is the energy of the flap. This is the bending energy of the flap. So I will not uh, give you now the, the complete calculation, but, uh, but give you a hand-waving argument uh, for, for why this will change things. So the, where is the elastic energy here? The elastic energy is in the is the fold that is uh, here in this uh, in this uh, flap here. So you see that um, if uh, in this direction this is maximum 
when um, this is the maximum of the energy release rate when we have no elastic energy. I see that uh, I can increase a little bit this energy release rate if I can reduce the energy of the of the flap. And the energy of the flap is proportional to the okay is is, is maybe not proportional but decreases with the width of the flap. And therefore, reducing the size of this uh, of this uh, bend uh, region uh, will reduce the elastic energy and therefore increase the energy release rate. So, in other words, I will the fracture will use mostly uh, the uh, work of the operator, but can also optimize its path by using also the energy released into uh, from, 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 the, from the fuel. From the fuel. So this is why the fracture will go inwards. So um, this is true also when you try to peel a piece of tape, we always shrink into a pointy shape. And uh, in the case of, of tape, we can, uh, the, the shape of the, of the fold will simplify. It will become uh, uh, cylindrical if you want. So we will be in, in, invariant in this direction. And we can make an, uh, an exact uh, calculation of the elastic energy of the fold. And in this case, we can predict uh, the angle of propagation. So I will not give you the details, but show you the, this is the prediction that we would get. The, in this case, uh, the angle of propagation would be constant. We will have the triangular shape and uh, it would depend on the fracture energy, on the bending stiffness and on the adhesion energy. And these are the, uh, this is the theory here. And these are the experiments which are scattered, but still they seem to agree with our uh, theory. And indeed, if you make the object, the, 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 the flap, I mean, sorry, the, the uh, the sheet thinnest and thinner, you will see that uh, this it goes like the thickness Q, and this goes like the thickness. So at the end, this goes like the thickness to the, uh, uh, sorry, uh, one half. And therefore for thinner and thinner material, you will get uh, closer and closer to uh, this case, which is our uh, inextensible, infinitely bendable case. In practice, if you make the experiment with a, a thinner, uh, let's let's use a thinner material like this one. This is thinner. We should get a thinner, uh, a, a different angle. So let me try to make it like that. And as I pull, you see that when you compare the two angles, they are uh, very uh, different. So the thinner the material, the closer we are to parallel strips. Okay. Um, okay, then I became a little bit obsessed with these pointy shapes. Uh, I found them, uh, you see that the argument is very, very robust. It's just the geometry plus uh, this uh, energy that is uh, uh, additional correction from the geometry that is due to the elastic energy. And it can be found at, uh, at large scale in, uh, in this uh, plane accident where you have some, some pointy uh, tears also here, but can also be, you also experience it when you peel a tomato or a fruit, it always uh, ends up in a pointy shape. And uh, this is observed in these pointy shapes here are observed in a graphene single uh, layer of material. So the thinnest material you can think of. It's very robust, but you can also see it in the subway when people are just uh, destroying uh, posters, which is, uh, we, I discussed a little bit uh, with uh, Nick, uh, that this is something that I used to be a little bit uh, bothered by, was a thing like an aggressive, an aggression to the to environment when I saw these uh, destroyed uh, uh, posters, but uh, I met this artist, which is, uh, so he's a famous, modern art uh, artist, but he says he's not an artist. He actually uh, collects torn um, posters in the city. So he, say, he says that there's a collective, collective, collective uh, anonymous art. So basically he says that sometimes these things are beautiful 
and in this when they're, when he finds them they're beautiful he will he would frame them and uh, this is really the action of the people in the city it, they are they are nice because you see they are random but you can still see this pointy shape which tell you the direction of the movement of the passersby. People have been moving in this direction, in this direction. So it's, it's not completely random. And uh, it, it, it does, uh, it did change my point of view on uh, torn posters in the subway, which I think is, is, a, nice, is a nice feeling uh, from art or from research also, when you, when you realize that there is something interesting to look at where you were uh, just uh, um, indifferent. So the conclusion is that it goes, uh, it goes uh, almost perpendicular, but slightly inwards, uh, perpendicular to the fold, but slightly inwards because of the elastic energy. I want to tell you more I want, and tell you about uh, another. So oof, I think I'm running late. So I will maybe skip one of these and maybe we'll, we'll show you later. So I will not show you this, but I want to tell you maybe if I want, if I, if I would tell you one more example, because I see it's already 2.40. The, the, the last example maybe I, I, can, I can tell you is the, the newest one that we've been working. So I'm sure that nobody knows about this one. And it's about uh, what happens when you want to uh, control. So the idea is how can you control uh, the path? You, some, the, the very common way is to use a ruler. So we do things like that. So why, why, why do we do things like that? So suppose we have a crack again, and we have a point A that I will pull in the direction uh, F with the force F. So uh, let's use our, uh, our uh, uh, our tools and uh, compute how much uh, I work when, when I pull on this. So I, I need to see how much is, the, is A displaced when, uh, when the, the crack advanced by a little bit. So there are two reasons of uh, why this uh, increases. First one is that the crack advances. So now it will be like this. So this distance uh, has increased and this is uh, this factor here. But there's another reason why my hand moves in this direction is that as the crack advances, this distance has increased also and will increase the flap length. And this is this uh, parameter here, which is a very simple geometry, but uh, still uh, takes time to figure out. Uh, kin, kin. It's very simple. So uh, we see that again, the energy release rate, which I obtain when I uh, divide this by uh, the thickness and uh, the advance so of uh, length uh, ds will be given by again a scalar product between uh, the the direction of fracture propagation and this new vector here which is uh, similar you it reminds you a lot about the first uh, example we, we discussed together and so where what is the direction of uh, propagation so let's assume first that tau the direction where i pull tau is in the plane if it's in the plane then uh, this uh, the, the 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 energy release rate will be maximum when t is is along this this vector, or said differently, the force required for propagation will be minimum when t is along this vector. It's the same argument, and so uh, this will give me uh, the direction of propagation. So I should add up this vector here, which is. Ta, and then this tau here, which is tau. And I get this direction for the crack. And incidentally, you will see that this is perpendicular to the fold. So we re recover something that I think is general, that the fracture tends to propagate perpendicular to the fold. If I assume that it's infinitely bendable and it's in an isotropic material. Of course, we saw together there are two things that make this an approximation only is the anisotropy of the material and the fact that it's not infinitely thin. So that's the prediction. And uh, okay, in general, people tend to, I made a little bit survey of how people uh, cut a piece of paper and in general, people tend to uh, move uh, the hand up also. So if, if tau now, is not only in the plane, but also has some uh, vertical component. What really matters, you, you see when you, when you maximize this, 
you will see that T will go along TA plus the projection on the plane of, of tau. So what really matters is the projection on the plane of the, the, the tearing vector. So let's see how it works. Uh, an interesting thing that I realized by, when we, I prepared this talk is that uh, there's a very easy way to make this uh, diagram. So let's suppose we start with the point A here. And uh, this, this, uh, yeah, this diagram is very easy to do when you look just straight from above from the, the, the sheet. In that case, so let's suppose the crack is here. So here I have the vector TA. So TA is very long here. Uh, it's very long. It's very long here, but I can take this as one for, for today. For, for today, this will be length one. So now this distance here, if I'm in the plane, uh, has just rotated. So it also has length when one. So I just have uh, written here TA and, and uh, tau. And if tau is not, uh, is out of plane, then what I see when I what I see on this uh, drawing when I look from above is really its projection on the plane. So it's exactly the vector I need. So the prediction is that this will be the direction of fracture. So this will be the direction of fracture. So you see that uh, it does a, an interesting job of predicting the the direction. You see that here this vector here is the same as this one, and it's not so uh, not so bad uh, to describe this this direction. And as I increase. Also, you see, uh, still does a reasonable job in giving us the direction. It seems like an interesting prediction. Uh, can we make this formal? So uh, we, we uh, it's a little bit um, more involved, but uh, I would just say that, uh, I will not comment too much details with respect to the time, but I would just say that if you want to really be quantitative, you need to include uh, anisotropy, this deflect the deflect and also uh, elastic uh, bending energy. So uh, this is the isotropic uh, simple uh, di direction prediction, but these are the points, and they are better described by this uh, dual uh, effect by including this dual effect. Even though, as a first approximation, it doesn't make a very bad job. So. Uh, but I would like to tell you more about uh, what I think is uh, the best way to uh, tear uh, and control the path. So the best way, if you want to control, is to make sure that the crack direction will go into the ruler. Because in that case, since it cannot go into the ruler, it would just follow the ruler, and therefore we have controlled the path that we would like to, to, to go. And then the, the, the force that you need to... Uh, apply is this where where this is theta is the direction between this vector and the ruler so you would like this vector to be not completely perpendicular because in that case you would need an infinite force uh, to propagate you would rather have this vector here almost parallel to the ruler if you want the force to be uh, not too high so uh, the best Optimal thing is, of course, to make sure that uh, this quantity is the largest, so you pull with the least force, and this quantity is one also. So this is when T A and T tau are along the ruler. So let's let's look at what it would uh, be. So let's uh, for, for this to happen, you need the, to to grab the, the the sheet of paper very close to the ruler. And you need to pull it uh, very close uh, to the direction of the ruler. So here I have my construction. And each time I, I uh, so this is uh, the crack point A, this is a crack, and this is uh, the, the pulling. So the sum are almost aligned, so they add up. And they are slightly inwards uh, compared to the, to the ruler direction. So it works. It works nicely. But you see that uh, now the sheet is now kind of moving into my hand, it's not really convenient, but it works. And when I asked my son to actually uh, tear uh, the easiest way, this is what he did. So he took uh, far, from the, far from the crack path and then moved up. So you cannot see here, but it, his hand is up. We can still do the um, construction. 
And we see that he made sure that the crack would go into the ruler. And uh, the nice thing is that his hand is not uh, really in contact with the sheet. So maybe moving up is a nice way to make sure that the things will go well and you are not uh, bothered by uh, contact of the, of the fold with your, with your, sheet, with your hands. So that's that's the that's the, the way. So I wanted to at the end you you, you realize that the, if you want the crack to stay along the ruler, it should never go. It should always you should yeah sorry you should always make sure that it is going inside this line, and uh, the construction should go always inside the ruler. This 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 line here in yellow is parallel to the ruler, so which which tells you that your hand here should never go into this zone. This is a pro, uh, this is a forbidden zone. If your hand goes into this zone, then the crack leaves the, the ruler and you lost the control. So that's the only rule you should uh, make sure. Uh, and you have a lot of different ways to actually uh, control your crack. So this is the this is a summary of, of, of this, of what I just said. If uh, in the first example, my hand, was going out in this region and therefore and therefore the crack would go out of the ruler if i pull so that my hand is inside this uh, boundary then it's okay i can have a nice tear okay so uh, this was uh, shorter than i thought but um, i told you about uh, this condition this condition this i had no time to talk about the a uh, spiraling uh, fracture that I can we can discuss if you wish. But what what is it I would like to, okay, there's another one still that I will not talk about. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I, maybe I stop here with um, several uh, e examples um, and tell you that uh, what we learn is that uh, fracture path in tearing are very uh, reproducible. They are very robust. And uh, because they uh, can be described in thin sheets, so if the sheet is very, very thin, so infinitely, infinitely thin, then we have a geometric model. And in this geometric model, we obtain geometric propagation rules. And this is why, in my opinion, uh, crack paths are so uh, uh, reproducible and obey geometric rules, geometric laws in these uh, cases. You see, we had some spirals that I didn't talk about and uh, hyperbola that I didn't show in this picture. And my uh, point, uh, maybe for those of you who are teaching uh, in, in the mechanics, is that I think it's a very nice system if you have to teach fracture mechanics because. It could be a very nice introduction uh, for a class of fracture mechanics because you start to talk about the, um, in my opinion, the main ingredients, which is Griffith criterion, without any of the technical difficulties of the singular stresses, which are, uh, I think, quite uh, subtle uh, to have a singular infinite stress in a a small strain approximation is always a little bit uh, perturbation, perturbing the, the students. So, okay, this is, um, okay, you, you have, uh, in the case where the, the sheet is, uh, is isotropic and infinitely thin, thin, you have these geometric rules, but in the real life, your material is most, most uh, probably anisotropic because of the way we make thin sheets and elasticity uh, either in plane elasticity or bending elasticity will perturb the direction of propagation and the plasticity also because when you pull too much uh, they tend to, uh, when you bend too much then uh, the material is damaged and uh, if you want to include um, any of these okay if you want to include elasticity and uh, in the framework, then we you very quickly uh, be, enter uh, very complex uh, cases. We have very few exact quantitative results, even though we have very interesting, I think, first order equations, first order uh, uh, solutions. An interesting question. So I would like to have more. 
we like to have more of these uh, quantitative uh, theories, uh, including elasticity, uh, to be more precise. Another question I would like to, I'm curious would be, how can we make the link between this geometric approach with the linear elastic fracture mechanics, which is, uh, which should uh, also explain those cases. Uh, and there's, a, there's something interesting because this crack that we are uh, talking about, they have no memories. You remember the direction of propagation do not depend on their previous path, but only on uh, the geometry of the pooling points. Whereas in uh, linear elastic fracture mechanics, then all the, uh, all the boundary condition should matter. And uh, in particular, the crack path, uh, the previous crack path uh, will influence the, uh, the forward propagation. So uh, cracks have memory because uh, elasticity has uh, boundary conditions that matters a lot. And uh, in our case, uh, in our uh, limit case, we forget about all these uh, memories. So how do we forget about memories? This is also something I'm, interesting, I'm interested in. And I'd like to thank you for your attention. Thanks.